Hi, I'm Rhonda Buss, and welcome to a brand new episode of So Busted's Material Witness. Uh, it's been a while since I've had an episode, but I'm very happy to be back. And today I have someone that I think is quite remarkable to introduce you to, and that is uh, Chad Elliott. Hello. And he has a very interesting name. How do you spell your name? T-C-H-A-D. And I was a little bit worried because I been calling him Chad and I thought oh am I messing up somehow and he said no 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 and it's the same as Tchaikovsky yeah that's right isn't that that's pretty impressive and um, it stems from the French language mm -hmm. yeah and uh, he by the way he is fluent in French which I'm very very jealous about um, he, um, came, he is originally from Kentucky he lives in uh, Chicago now and he has this fabulous space which you can kind of see behind us where he has um, he conducts sewing classes and it's sewing classes with Chad and it's a really it's a, a very wonderful program and um, your primary focus is with adults mostly with adults I'll take people as young as 16 but when you start getting younger than 16 there's some there are some kind of um, issues in terms of guidance. Like I can't demand the same things from younger people that I can demand from adults. And uh, you were saying that you especially enjoy the professional person who's either coming back into sewing. Yay. Yes. I really enjoy having people who are professionals in their everyday life who want to take up something that's creative but that also fulfills some kind of technical need they have. So in my classes, they're really overrepresented with physicians and, and attorneys because it's such a process-based um, it's such a process-based hobby that goes along with their process-based job, mm -hmm. and it, it works out really well. But at the end of the day, it's a little bit of everybody who ends up up here. Yeah, it's a little bit of everybody. And I've I've met a number of his students, and it it truly is a little bit of everybody, and just a wonderful group of people who have um, a thirst to learn to sew, which of course is just warms my heart. And um, yeah, so he's providing this fabulous um, experience right in the heart of Chicago, and you've been here since when? I've been in this space since 2004. I've been teaching in the space since about 2005 or six. Mm -hmm. um, when we first, uh, because I always like to sit down and have a little bit of an interview first so that I know what I'm talking about. Um, but uh, he had told me that he was from uh, Kentucky, right on the border of Indiana and Kentucky. And he, I asked him when he started sewing and you said, I don't remember. Right. But as it turns out, uh, he and I have a rather similar experience. Um, he said that when he was teeny tiny that he started learning to do embroidery work and um, it's the same with me. When I was five years old, my grandmother taught me for the first time to do a little piece of embroidery and so he said it, it's just, it's always been a part of his life and then um, ultimately you went to college? I and went to college. Um, I went to college. I've got a degree in international studies and French with a focus on post-colonial political and financial systems. Um, but that's not where he started. But that's not where I started. I actually started in theater. And when I graduated high school, that was something that I had done a lot up until that point. And then there were a couple of things that happened at the beginning, right right as I was entering college, and I just completely changed direction. And then kind of worked through something that was a little bit more practical in terms of the adults who were around me. Um, but yeah, I, I just kind of thought that I had left it behind forever. Once it gets in your blood, it's That's in it. your blood. That's it. And it helps that a lot of what I do up here, both in terms of classes and in terms of design work, that's a performative life. Very you much know, so. You, you're, you're still, you may not be acting in the sense that you're creating a character, but it's still, you have a show to put on. You know, and, and so you do. And that, I think that that's kind of what's satiated that 
in theater New York with me. And uh, one of the things that Chad mentioned when we were talking earlier was that um, you know you can know how to do a craft, but teaching is a whole different ball game. Because there's usually, I think I said that there is an emotional hinge involved between yes. knowing and being able to teach it. And I feel like one of the things that I'm very proud of is how I kind of work with that hinge, you know, because there is there is a very emotional part of all of this, especially for adults who are already competent in their daily life, you know, they've gone to college, they have a job that they're good at, or at least that they can function in, and then to throw something on the table that's completely new, and, you know, maybe you're 35 and you haven't learned anything new since high school, um, in terms of a trade or a craft, it, that's hard. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to be a grown person bad at something initially because we get not used to that, you know? So it's, I, I kind of pride myself on being able to, to build that bridge between those two worlds of competence and education and craft um, with, like I said, I think, it's, I think it is a little bit of an emotional hinge. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and behind us is a gown that it was a, a demonstration piece and it's not a full gown yet well it's just it looks a fabulous anyway um if you can see here why don't we move this a little bit closer this? um he what he, you can see the all of the smocking here so tell us about well why you did this so i grew up watching and that's, that's just be, that's just one one piece of fabric that's it I grew up um, with a very young mother. I was born in the mid 70s. And so I saw a lot of that 70s, very early 80s fashion that was simplified and that relied on technique rather than piecing to give the garment shape. And I get a lot of people in class who say, oh, I have this event to go to in December, but I don't want to make a 32 piece evening gown. And it's like, well, you don't have to. You can use just one or two pieces of fabric and you can give that garment shape by using specific techniques. In this case, it's a, an old fashioned smocking technique that I learned when I was a kid that it gives it depth and texture, it gives it dimension and starts to give it shape. Um, in this case, in this navy blue crepe, we were working it out just as a waistband. Ultimately, um, over the next couple of months, we're going to talk about how to work this out at any low point on the body. So at the waist, through the neckline, you can work it around so that it drapes back. But I'd like to, and we're kind of playing around with keeping this one piece of fabric that is then shaped from within without it just being draped. Because the Grecian stuff is very easy and it's great, you know, tie the corners together, put a bow on there, run out the door. But it's, it's interesting when it looks like more than it is and people can't quite figure out. Like, how is that piece? What's going on there? Are those, did you hide darts in there? And it's like, no, no. It's just, in this case, the, the mathematics and geometry of the grid that you build to get the shape works out. So things like this interest me a lot. Well, I like something that you just said too, because you were, he was talking about the mathematics and geometry. And so often, I think people think that, well, you go, you buy a pattern, you cut it out, mm -hmm. you sew it up, kind of brainless, but far from it. Right, and even when you are working at that level, when you're working at the pattern level, you can start to, after you've done a couple, you can start to see kind of that geometry come into play. You can see those shapes and like what the outside of a waistband or a shoulder looks like and how that's kind of universal throughout similar shoulders and waistbands, you start to kind of absorb the geometry without really knowing it. And I think that, I think things like that are kind of neat. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, because something that I enjoy doing very much, and for those of you who have followed the blog for a while, you know that I especially love geometric shapes and how you can work with them and play with them and turn them into really something quite fabulous. And it's really, just a couple pieces of fabric. Right, well, like yeah. the color block coat that you that you had at the last fashion show. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. You're, you're taking something that's essentially just a series of squares and angles and you're turning it into a shaped garment that has a certain drape. Right. That's fun. It's fun. It's a lot of fun. Um, Chad offers his classes here. Um, 
they are it's a 10-week class and they are three hour classes so um, if you are in Chicago I would highly recommend looking into his classes and the um, his website will be in the comment or in the little section below so that you can easily uh, find him um, but he's just an all-around interesting inspirational person and one of the things that I love with these videos is uh, you know trying to showcase people who are sewing and actually making a business out of it but you know his life is so much more than that he's truly a renaissance man he paints he's quite the artist um, he's an actor horses you like horses I ride horses and I oh show my goodness he didn't even tell me that so I got surprised we show um, I started a, a not-for-profit in Wisconsin with a friend of mine and we bring kids who are having trouble out to the horse farm where there's six horses and a mule and um, we show them horsemanship mostly groundwork initially like we don't start off with riding it's a lot of a lot of training exercises a lot of just kind of engaging with the horse and so that's another big love of mine oh that is fabulous well you know coming from right on the border of Kentucky you know loving a horse and it's yeah. like you can't come from Kentucky and not love a horse right. so well and yeah. I grew up with them so that helps yeah. you know it wasn't it wasn't something new for me it's just that after you're in the city for so long you're like oh I've got to get out I got I got to get out to the I gotta country I got to get out I got to remember that there's trees and like, grass dresses somewhere dresses are great yeah. dresses are great but I got to get out yeah. and so you know you I was able to find a way that I could really blend my city and country life in a couple of different ways and it works very nice you know, it works you don't have to choose you don't have to choose no you can be all you want to be <laughs> definitely so would it be um, something that you would be interested in doing say if there's a group of people that are thinking of coming to Chicago that might want to do a workshop with you? Sure, sure, we so, can do that. Yeah, if I'm nice. in the city and I'm not otherwise in class or working on another project, yeah, we can totally do that. Yeah, so totally very nice. Um, so, uh, like I said, there'll be a link. He ha has a blog. He's had a rather busy summer, so the blog was a little bit lacking but you can go through and see some of the beautiful things he's done. Um, I'll also have a link to his Instagram account. Um, and what am I forgetting? I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't think, know. I mean, the blog is, I, I like the blog as a way to show off what people do up here. So there's not a lot of me, 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 oh, look at me. Because it's not so much about me. I mean, you get that a little bit, but. Well, it, the Instagram account is definitely not about Chad. Yeah, it's, it's about, really about his students. Yeah, it's about what people can come up with in the space, you know, within this, within the focus of a regular class. You know? and I've always been really, really proud and happy about what people are able to do up here. Well, I have to tell you, there was a photograph that you posted on Instagram. He doesn't know which one I'm going to say, but there was one. Oh my goodness, you helped a young woman do her wedding gown. It was just drop dead gorgeous, and uh, there was one picture. And uh, now I was not around when Gone with the Wind came out as a movie, but, so I'm dating myself a little bit, but not not quite that much. But um, I commented to Chad after I saw the picture. I said. Oh my goodness, be still my heart. It's you were Rhett Butler. <laughs> it was such a beautiful yeah. Yes, it was. And it was such a beautiful picture, but the gown that she created. She did a good job with that. Oh my goodness. Absolutely phenomenal. And may I post the picture? Yeah, of course, of course. Okay. Well, so there there will be in the blog post. So if you see the video, go back to my blog and you'll see a picture of that or you can go to Chad's Instagram account which sure. there'll be a link for that as well so you can see uh, pictures of other of that as well as other pieces that have been created here and the funny thing about that wedding dress is that was kind of a year-long process because we started it and then she found out she was pregnant and so we had Oops. to work this <laughs> I mean, happens 
So we had to work this strapless evening gown or wedding dress through a whole process around the entire pregnancy, hoping that two weeks after she gave birth, we would still be able to get her into it, which turns out was okay. And we actually had to take it in a little bit, but it, that it was an entire process, yeah. which I have not brought myself to write about on the blog yet, but will by the end of the month. Yeah, it, it, it is absolutely, it was breathtaking and the, the, the photographs were just dreamy beautiful. So um, we're very ha happy to have you here in Thank Chicago. You. And uh, I, I feel so bad, I didn't even know Chad existed. Because and I had. <laughs> he, um, actually when I opened up my Instagram account, he saw that. I messaged you. Yes. Because I've followed your blog for a while. And I was like, oh my God, Rada. <laughs> and then you said, oh, that's nice. And then, then we kind of hooked up from yes, there. Yes, yes. So, um, so anyway, uh, you know, it's, I, I, I always, you know, the, the, the saying of seven degrees of separation, is, uh, it really isn't that much at all, if that. Sometimes it's only one or two. So, um, it was, it's been lovely getting to know you and uh, finding out more about your life and the school and what he has to offer here. And um, so I, I know that if you decide to take a class, you're in very, very good hands. Um, he has patience of Job and a lot of patience and, uh, you know, and his desire is just to see those who come to him really grow and blossom as a soloist and, and a creator yeah. yes so thank you so much is there before we go is there something that you would like to add i don't think so okay all right i mean i'm a creative person so i can talk about myself a lot but i don't think so oh I think okay we're good. okay but thank you so much thank for you. doing the interview and um i hope you'll check out his blog uh, if you're in chicago come take a class um, like I said, I think you'll enjoy getting to know Chad. He's a, a wonderful person and a great resource. So thanks again. Um, it's always nice to come and uh, bring you a video, and it's nice to be back. So until next time, so on.